there's Voyager crossing over into interstellar space. Voyager accomplished its mission so brilliantly and now goes on. Outer space has always been a wonder to humanity. For the longest time, we have wondered and spent a lot of resources in attempts to communicate with whatever else may be out there. But it turns out it's a very mysterious and deep part of the universe. When something has mass, it has the ability to bend space. One of these attempts is the Voyager spacecrafts, which reportedly just made contact with a highly unusual object in deep space. What could this mean? Could it be that we have finally made contact with advanced life after all this time? Join us in this video as we explore what Voyager 1 collided with in deep space. Roll program is in on time. Vehicle response is normal. Voyager 1 is a NASA space probe launched on September 5, 1977 as part of the Voyager program to study the outer solar system and interstellar space beyond the Sun's heliosphere. Voyager 1 was launched 16 days after its twin, Voyager 2. Voyager 1 communicates through NASA's deep space network to receive routine commands and transmit data to Earth. Voyager is situated at a distance of 159.32 AU, 23.834 billion kilometers, from the Earth. This distance makes Voyager one the most distant man-made object in space. It is the furthest man-made object from Earth. Voyager 1 has provided crucial data in humans' quest to understand space, especially our solar system. As part of the Voyager program, and like its sister craft, Voyager 2, Voyager 1's mission is to locate and study the regions and boundaries of the outer heliosphere of the Sun. According to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Voyager 1 travels at 38,000 miles per hour across space. Voyager 1 has traveled across space for over four decades, far exceeding its projected time frame in space. The space probe ambles around in space, recording and transmitting information about its travels across space daily. Voyager 1 is said to have enough fuel to sustain its interstellar travel till at least 2025. This means that Voyager may not be taking a bow out of space traveling just yet. By 2025, the spacecraft is expected to have reached about 13.8 billion miles from the Sun. Voyager 1 and its twin craft, Voyager 2, were made similarly. Both spacecraft were geared with 10 unique medical gadgets. These gadgets include television, cameras, infrared and ultraviolet sensors, magnetometers and plasma detectors, cosmic rays, charged particle sensors, and radio for undertaking experiences. Equipped with these gadgets, Voyager 1 has withstood 40,000 miles of Saturn's cloud, while Voyager 2 was given as near 26,000 miles. Saturn is one of the biggest planets in our solar system second only to Jupiter. It has an orbital duration of 29.5 Earth years. Saturn, however, takes only 10.7 hours to completely rotate on its axis. In May this year, NASA engineers confronted a peculiar problem. Voyager 1 had started sending jumbled and ordinary statistics instead of the telemetry facts that one has come to expect from the space aircraft. Voyager 1 usually provides clean and easily readable data, but the reverse has been the case for some days now. The engineers consider this a major setback that may terminate this mission, even if they don't want to give up on it yet. Voyager 1 has been one of the most successful space missions, and giving up on it after all these decades may be equivalent to giving up on an impressive child. However, recent studies published in the space magazine, Nature Astronomy. Very exciting news uh, being published in the Nature, Mag Nature magazine. Nature Astronomy. Nature, Nature Astronomy. Astronomy. Reveal that the gadgets on board Voyager 1 have heard the sounds of plasma waves. This is feasible because this spacecraft has successfully traversed three milestones. It has traveled past the threshold of the solar device, through the heliopause, and entered the interstellar medium. Currently, Voyager 2 still has about five functional instruments while Voyager 1 has only four left. However, both spacecraft are still crucial for gathering valuable data about the events in outer space. 
Before diving fully into the strange messages that Voyager 1 has been transmitting, let's take a look at some of Voyager 1's amazing discoveries. Voyager 1, alongside Voyager 2, was to embark on an interstellar journey and take a closer look at the systems governing Jupiter and Saturn, two of the largest planets in our solar system. Voyager spacecrafts did their job remarkably well, taking images never seen before and gathering an extensive amount of data. These data revolutionized humans' understanding of these mighty planets. After the successful Jupiter and Saturn mission, Voyager 1 bid its twin goodbye and skipped off into interstellar space. Voyager 2, on the other hand, made other stops along our solar system. In 1981, NASA made a corrective maneuver to set Voyager 2 on a course toward Uranus. It indeed got to Uranus in 1986, outliving its expected lifespan twice within that period. On the way to Uranus, Voyager 2 pointed out about 10 previously unknown moons, thus adding to the growing celestial family of our solar system. Later, scientists set it on course for the ultimate destination, Neptune. Neptune was one of the farthest planets in our solar system at the time, while Pluto was the farthest. In Neptune, Voyager 2 captured more than 9,000 images. Then it delivered a surprise. Neptune had nine moons. The nine moons were not the only shocker. Triton, Neptune's largest moon, held more surprises. Strangely, Triton's diameter was not quite what we thought it was, and the moon had some interesting features dotting its surface. Thanks to Voyager 2, we could finally know what exactly was the brownish-white coloration on Triton's surface. These colorations were, in fact, geysers. These geysers are volcanic formations that spew out liquid nitrogen. This liquid nitrogen then freezes into white nitrogen snow when it lands on the surface of the moon. These outstanding discoveries significantly improved our understanding of our solar system and cosmic neighborhoods. No other spacecraft has visited Uranus and Neptune after Voyager 2. Yet researchers still observe and study interesting phenomena surrounding these planets, albeit from afar. Here are some of the mysterious spectacles revealed in these planets. When it comes to ice giants in our solar system, the list is pretty limited. There are only two members on that list, Uranus and Neptune. Even though these two planets are called ice giants, they are not exactly floating balls of ice. Instead, these planets are made of hot, supercritical liquids which consist of extremely volatile compounds like water, ammonia, and methane. At an average solar distance of 1.8 billion miles, Uranus is the second outermost planet in our solar system, at least now that Pluto has been kicked to the curb. Uranus is about four times the size of our planet Earth in diameter. It takes the planet about 84 Earth years to complete its orbit around the Sun. Uranus also has one peculiar quality. It appears to be lying on its side. To explain this anomaly, scientists suggest that Uranus must have collided with a large protoplanet earlier, causing the planet to have this odd inclination on its axis. This is, however, an assumption that cannot be verified. No one can tell why Uranus is circling the Sun on its side. It is also believed that the 27 moons orbiting Uranus resulted from the said collision. The moons may have been formed from the debris of the collision. Another topic of interest is the white spot found in Uranus's atmosphere. About 10 years ago, a massive white spot was found in Uranus's atmosphere, thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope. This gigantic white spot turned out to be a massive storm, whipping around at up to 89 miles per hour. This storm was found to be larger than the United States. More fascinating is the fact that Uranus's ammonia clouds dropped to sub-zero temperatures of about 323 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, just like Saturn, Uranus has a ring system, except it's not as grand as that of Saturn. In 1846, another planet was added to the star charts of our solar system. This bluish shimmering planet was christened Neptune. Neptune is the outermost planet in our solar system. It used to be the second outermost before Pluto was removed from the list. Neptune is nearly 3 billion miles away from the Sun, making it relatively lonely. Neptune is quite similar in size to its next-door neighbor Uranus. Neptune has a diameter of about 31,000 miles. 
With their similarity in size, one would think that these two planets would be identical in weight, but Neptune considerably beats Uranus in mass. Neptune has a weight approximately 17 times Earth's size, while Uranus is 14.5 times the size of Earth. Neptune has a very slow orbit period due to its long distance from the Sun. It takes about 165 Earth years to complete one revolution around the Sun. To put this in perspective, if Neptune was inhabited like Earth, by the time Neptune civilization celebrates a new year, an entire generation of Earth civilization would have passed away if they all died of natural causes at the highest lifespan that humans can live for. However, Neptune spins rather fast and has a short rotation time. It takes Neptune a mere 16 hours to complete a rotation around its axis. When NASA's Voyager 2 visited the planet in 1989, it made a puzzling weather discovery. Voyager 2 captured bright bands of clouds in the atmosphere, as well as storms that moved at astonishing speeds of about 1,305 miles per hour. You would not want to be caught in a hurricane of that magnitude. Scientists believe that these incredible storms are caused by the solar energy deficiency that Neptune experiences on account of its great distance from the Sun. They also believe that these storm clouds would possibly vanish into thin air someday. In addition to this, at a point during the Voyager 2 missions, scientists discovered the Great Dark Spot. The spot was estimated to be as big as Eurasia. This spot was assumed to be a hole in the planet's visible cloud cover. Then the strangest thing happened. Just a few years after discovering this dark spot, scientists tried to locate it again, but to everyone's amazement, the spot was nowhere to be seen. It was as if it had vanished into thin air or never even existed. Some theories tried to explain it away, suggesting that the heat from Neptune's core caused turbulence in the atmosphere which tore apart whatever the structure was. Because it, it wasn't featureless. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, good, a planet with, with clouds and features again. Scientists believe that due to Neptune's rather massive size, the planet would have a very large core or heart. Neptune is estimated to possess a core of about one to one and a half Earth masses, with temperatures reaching 13,000 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures estimated at several million bars. Other peculiarities surrounding these neighboring planets, Uranus and Neptune, are their gravitational fields and characteristics. The gravitational fields of these planets are quite unlike those of any other planet. Rather than come from the center of the planet, the magnetic fields seem to deviate from it, choosing instead to tilt toward the rotation axis. Scientists have not been able to explain the reason for this abnormality since it was discovered. What we do know is that Neptune's gravitational field is 27 times stronger than that of our home planet. However, for some reason nobody can explain Uranus, despite its significant difference in size and mass from Earth, has a weaker gravitational field than Earth. One cannot even begin to fathom why, but who can accurately guess what things should be like? The cosmos scorn and defy laws of physics, and things that are beyond the capacity of our mind occur in this vast space that is our universe. It is widely believed that the dual planets have massive cores with relatively high temperatures and pressure, surrounded by dense layers consisting of ammonia, hydrocarbons, and water. Scientists have, for the longest time, been intrigued with the process that could be taking place under the immense pressure of these planets. One interesting theory believes that diamonds may be raining in both Uranus and Neptune. This diamond rain idea did not remain just a theory. Finger was the only diamond in your life, then think again, because industrial diamonds are in use all around us. Even the tiles in your toilet were probably cut with a diamond blade. A few years back, the theory was proven to be true with the help of an experiment conducted by some researchers. The team used polystyrene, a plastic made of hydrogen and carbon atoms, to recreate the immense pressure conditions inside the dual ice giants. They proceeded to send two shockwaves to see if the hydrocarbon compounds would split under immense pressure. The experiment generated a whooping pressure of 1.5 million bars and raised the temperature to a scorching 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The result? An astonishing shower of tiny glittering diamonds fell from the simulated cloud. Nearly all the carbon atoms had joined to form the tiny crystals that showered in the simulator. 
The diamonds that would be formed in the atmosphere of Uranus and Neptune would be much bigger as they are produced on a much larger scale and in more definitive conditions. After these diamonds are formed, they sink to their planet's core over thousands of years. Just imagine millions of years worth of diamonds lying beneath the planet's core. The thought of diamonds falling as rain somewhere in the cosmos is just mind-blowing. Diamonds have always fascinated humankind. And according to myths, when these precious stones were first found, they were thought to be... This phenomenon adds to the intrigue surrounding these ice giants. Over the past decades, the two probes in the form of Voyager 1 and 2 have ventured into a vast and rather mysterious region known as the interstellar medium. The interstellar medium is the space between stars, which is sparsely populated. Even in these regions with sparse populations, many amazing discoveries are still being made. One such discovery is the strength and direction of the interstellar magnetic field. This discovery has sparked heated debates within the science communities about the shape and activity of the sun's magnetic domain, the heliosphere. The heliosphere was initially thought to be shaped somewhat like a comet. Now scientists believe it is shaped more like a sphere. In case you have ever wondered what happens to the heliosphere when sunspots appear and disappear, our trusty space probes have provided an answer to this question. When the solar wind, which is a flow of charged particles emanating from the sun, comes to a halt, it signifies the start of the interstellar medium. The ionized gas, or plasma, can be likened to a rock in a river, pushing against the cooler, more dense plasma flowing around it. The sun cavity that forms is called the heliosphere, and the edge is called the heliopause, as in where the sphere pauses. This is similar to how the top of the Earth's troposphere is called the tropopause. Don Gurnett, a University of Iowa researcher who worked on the Voyager mission, said that when the spacecraft launched, there was no concrete knowledge as to how far the heliosphere extended. Tremendous amounts of this wideband data during the Jupiter flyby, and you know, that got our foot in the door. It was initially assumed that the heliosphere would extend to Jupiter, with Jupiter being only five times more distant from the Sun than the Earth. However, as the Voyager vessels journeyed, these estimates were shattered when it was discovered that the heliosphere covered a greater distance even beyond Neptune. Nobody knew when or where the spacecraft would enter interstellar space. According to Don Gurnett, shortly after Voyager 2 passed Neptune, it detected signs of heliopause in the distance. The Voyager picked up strong radio waves between 2 and 3 kilohertz in July 1992. Heat bubble of our sun. They're kind of going into interstellar space. And what they detected a few times is they detected these bulks or waves of plasma. These radio waves were later attributed to six significant flares of the sun, which had occurred about a year prior. Some researchers later found that the plasma from these flares had eventually made its way to the heliopause, causing electrons to oscillate and release radio waves. The frequency of said radio waves released implied a density matching that was expected for the interstellar medium. This revealed that the local interstellar medium is far denser than the outer heliosphere. From Earth, the local interstellar medium resembles a vacuum, but what many might not know is that this vacuum is rather tenuous. To get the distance of the heliopause from the sun, the speed of outbound solar material, and the time it took the material to hit the boundary, the heliopause, must be calculated. The distance between the sun and the heliopause has been measured to be about 177 astronomical units. This has provided some insight into our solar system's outer boundaries. Although Voyager 1 left some indications showing it had left the heliosphere, such as a decrease in high-energy particles from the Sun and an increase in cosmic rays from beyond the solar system, many researchers remain unconvinced. One of the issues causing this discrepancy is that Voyager 1's plasma instrument had ceased to function, making it difficult to measure the sudden increase in particle density. That occurs when leaving the heliosphere. In addition, it was expected that the magnetic field would point in a different direction. This, too, did not happen. On November 15, 2018, Voyager 2 reached another significant milestone. It successfully crossed the heliopause. This time, there was no discrepancy as its plasma instrument was still functioning optimally. Hence, it was able to record a significant increase in particle density. 
Voyager 1 continues to transmit data frequently and appears to be in good shape. However, it is possible that the spacecraft developed what is known as electronic aphasia, which impairs its ability to transmit fluently. Scientists have studied the issue critically and thankfully have found a way to mitigate it. Voyager 1 has been a true pioneer in space exploration. This revolutionary spacecraft has braved areas outside our sun's magnetic field to bring us tidings from the other side. It has braved harsh conditions to provide information that would expand our interstellar knowledge. It would be a shame to see it bow out before its time.